How do you improve sperm quality? Top 10 things that negatively impact male fertility. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI, so I'm a fertility doctor. And every day I talk about eggs, sperm, and embryos. Today I wanna to talk to you about sperm. I think sometimes we talk too much about fertility when it comes to eggs and female factors, and we don't always give enough attention to male factors. The truth is about 40% of infertility is either solely caused or has a contributing male factor. So the idea, and I've had patients say this before, oh, don't evaluate him, the problem is me. We do not know that. We do not know what we do not know. And the semen analysis is a crucial piece of the evaluation. All right, so when we do a semen analysis, what are we looking for quickly? So really quickly, when you do a semen analysis, you're just getting an idea of the basic sperm parameters. How many sperm are there? How do they move? And what are their shape? That is not telling you necessarily about the functionality or the true quality of the sperm, but it's giving us the best idea that it can. We do know that certain lifestyle behaviors can drastically impact sperm. And the reason why sperm is so interesting as compared to eggs is that they're really fragile, they're really vulnerable, but they are constantly regenerated. The testes make more than a million sperm every single day. That's just amazing when you think about eggs and the fact that inside the ovary, a woman is born with all the eggs she's ever going to have and just runs out of them. So very different. The life cycle of a sperm is approximately 90 days from start into ejaculation, about 72 days of sperm growth, and then about 18 days to get from testes into the ejaculated sample. So when we talk about sperm quality, we're usually looking at a three month window, meaning if you make changes, you could see really different sperm three months from now. And I think that's a very important factor when we start looking at should we make changes and can those lifestyle changes really play a role in our fertility? The short answer is yes. So let's break down the 10 top causes of things that impact male fertility that you should know about because you might be able to change. Number one, and this is probably always going to be number one on everybody's list is smoking cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes cause a lot of oxidative stress. That is a known damaging factor of sperm. That oxidative stress damages their DNA, damages their ability to move, be created, overall well known to impact both egg and sperm quality should stop. Number two, alcohol. Now you are going to come at me in the comments and say tons of people have gotten pregnant. My so-and-so friend smokes four packs a day and has 28 children. I mean, you're going to say that. Yes, for people, alcohol, smoking cigarettes, those aren't always going to cause sterility. But if you are having a hard time getting pregnant or looking to optimize your fertility, then these things play a role. And we have clear evidence that alcohol decreases both the quantity of sperm, the motility, the morphology of the shape, and it also increases the DNA fragmentation of the head. Chronic and an increased usage appears to be worse. And it does look like none is optimal. Minimal drinking is going to be less than four drinks per week. And we're talking about real drinks, not Texas sized drinks. So we really want you to limit it. I never say all or nothing to my patients, but I definitely do say that acting like it doesn't make a difference is just false. The next is marijuana usage. Marijuana is clearly an issue. We have limited research on it because since it was illegal, you couldn't study it and you couldn't do a randomized controlled trial. So everything was observational. And so observational studies definitely look at poor sperm parameters. We do even have studies looking at monkeys and edibles because that's been a question I get a lot. And we show severely decreased sperm production when these monkeys were exposed to increasing concentrations of edibles. So both concentration of sperm, morphology of sperm, decreased testicular size, decreased production of hormones. I mean, like who wants testicular atrophy? That sounds pretty terrible. But within four months of stopping, we saw improvement of parameters. So also showing that if you have somebody in your life who has sperm and you want to have a baby with them and they're a chronic cannabis user in one way or another, that you should tell them to stop because we do see an improvement. This has actually played a huge role in some of my patients. Maybe they don't disclose this information. We go through a cycle. The semen analysis looks good, but we don't get the embryos we want. The sperm ends up being you know, highly fragmented from somebody who's a daily marijuana user and has for a long time. So this falls under the same idea. It changes both gene expression, DNA damage, 
and how our body makes sperm. Next is going to be just toxins in general. So this can be things like plastics, BPA, you know, environmental toxins are a huge deal. We also have toxins like heat. So this is why we say, you know, you shouldn't have like very long cycling. Like if you're outdoor cycling for two hours plus, if you're sitting in the hot tub for hours every day or the sauna every day, working with your laptop directly on your testes in your lap, those things may actually play a role in decreasing the production of the sperm. The testes are outside the body for a reason. It's because they are meant to be at a lower temperature and that is ideal for sperm production. And this is why if you have an undescended testicle and it stays inside the body, it is actually going to stop functioning altogether. It'll go into testicular failure. So heat, and it does have to be a lot of heat, can be problematic. So far, smoking, alcohol, marijuana, toxins. Next, let's talk about obesity. So obesity does contribute to having lowering of sperm count, mainly through either concentration or morphology. Reasons why is that when you have fat cells, those fat cells make estrogen. When you have estrogen, it decreases the brain's ability to send out FSH and LH, the hormones that are important in sperm production. And so you are down-regulating your own body's ability to make as much sperm. Further, obesity leads to a chronic inflammatory state and inflammation is toxic. It has oxidative stress, and that is overall bad for our sperm. So being in a healthy BMI is very important. If you're overweight, trying to lose weight can be helpful in improving your sperm parameters. Number six, and along the same lines, is a diet. Bad diet choices, mostly processed foods, high sugar diets, have been associated with worse sperm parameters. And so these things go together. Whole foods are good for our bodies, meaning fruits and vegetables and the foods you find on planet earth. Meat is a big one here. Okay, so all the processed meats are bad. They really do fall into the processed meat category. Your bacon, the processed stuff, hot dogs, it's a no-go. They are associated with worse parameters. Organ meats, I do not know who these people are telling you to eat like beef liver to improve your fertility. That has been associated in studies with lowering your sperm counts. Now, what is the meat? If you're going to consume animal meat, that's the best. It's going to be what you would think. It's going to be fish, foods along the Mediterranean diet. So fish and shellfish and things like that. Overall, just like consuming meat on a whole was not necessarily bad for sperm parameters. The type of meat probably is very important and the type of person who consumes other diets. Meaning if you eat a lot of bacon and hot dogs, you may not have the most balanced diet. Same thing, if you're eating organ meat, you might be having a very carnivore diet and you're not having lots of good fruits and veggies. Your fish and shellfish intake is associated with a Mediterranean diet. Overall, healthy fats, lots of fruits and vegetables. That is what has been shown to be good for you. All right, next is going to be any illness. So any bad viral illness that you have can cause the body to stop production of sperm because the body is not certain if it is going to be able to overcome this. And so this really can fall into either a stress-related category or just an illness because we do see in severe stress, the brain similarly doesn't know how to interpret this. Are you in a famine or a war or is work hard? Remember that chronic stress was not a thing that was really around when our bodies were created and our hormone system was formed. So chronic stress does deregulate the pituitary gland to send out the hormones that make sperm. We know that. Illness, so febrile illness, like mumps is the classic example, causes people to go into testicular failure. So this is why, you know, getting the MMR vaccine was so important to vaccinate your children so you can prevent having sterilization from a viral illness. COVID hasn't been shown to cause sterilization, but we've had a clear demonstration of a drop in sperm counts after exposure to COVID with recovery after three plus months have passed. So any illness, when your body is consumed with the illness, it deprioritizes making sperm. And I think that that makes sense as well. Next is going to be your age. So even though so much attention goes to female age, we should not ignore male age. We do see a decrease in both sperm production. Men do eventually go into testicular failure. And we also see increase in miscarriage and also neurodevelopmental disorders as male sperm is older. So when men are over 50, we see an increase in autism spectrum disorders and other developmental things that are essentially very important. So we don't want to D play a role. 
but that sperm quality does change and that's why we also see an increase in miscarriage with increase in male paternal age. All right, so number nine is going to be any medical illnesses. So medical illnesses, things especially like diabetes, having uncontrolled diabetes, untreated depression or anxiety, or even things that cause chronic inflammation or autoimmune diseases. So when these diseases are well controlled, it appears to be less of an issue, but uncontrolled medical illnesses have been associated with lower sperm counts. Diabetes is the classic ones. The higher your sugar is, the worse your sperm is going to be. And this is just telling us the body is either going to not make sperm, which is one, but two, it's not going to be able to process sperm and give it all the parts that it needs. Because remember, it is generating brand new sperm. So it needs to have enough energy and resources to create and form that sperm correctly. And then the last one, number 10, not to be forgotten, is going to be steroid use. So I see so many people who are placed on exogenous testosterone or taking anabolic steroids who are never told that it can have a severe impact on their fertility. We see people going to clinics with fatigue or libido issues and maybe who do have low T, but the treatment if you're trying to get pregnant is going to be medications that are increasing your natural supply of testosterone. Things like Clomid, aromatase inhibitors, HCG, medications that tell the testes to make more T and make more sperm. The problem with testosterone is that if you take testosterone, your brain is going to think that it has plenty of sperm because testosterone and sperm are made together. So if the brain says there's a lot of tea, it doesn't need to make any sperm. And so it is not going to. Essentially taking testosterone is male birth control. And I have seen people who have been unable to get sufficient quantities of sperm back into the ejaculate even after stopping or they feel miserable or it's extremely difficult longer and more chronic use is a significant factor here. And so just because you go somewhere, the men's health clinic, or even a doctor gives you testosterone, if you are trying to get pregnant, do not take it without talking to a fertility doctor or talking to a reproductive urologist or somebody who knows that tea alone will cause you to be sterile. All right. So in summary, smoking, alcohol, marijuana, toxins including heat, obesity, poor diet, viral illness or stress, increased age, medical problems, and hormone use like tea. These are top 10 things that impact male fertility and things that you can modify if you're trying to get pregnant. I am going to do a video coming up on myths. So if you have anything that you have heard that potentially might impact fertility or sperm quality, please place it in the comments and we would love to answer it. We'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel. As always, that helps us grow and spread information. And you can always find more information on the As A Woman podcast or on my Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.